Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And this one is all going to be about the Porsche Turbo and something that happened, complete surprise, two weeks ago, I got to drive a very special turbo that I never expected to get behind the wheel of. It happened as Porsche was setting up for Goodwood members meeting when they had that incredible spread of Group 4 racing 911 over the ages from a GT1 car, the Moby Dick was there, and, and all sorts of racing 934, 935. I had gone down in my Turbo SCC here, the 930S, and because the owner, I've done this story before, the original owner of this car was heavily into racing over in America and owned a Moby Dick, a 935-78, to give it its technical term, but more commonly known as the Moby Dick. And they, Porsche, were bringing one over from the factory. And I, Porsche gave me this tip off. I said, if you come down on the Thursday, you could get a photo of my Porsche next to a Moby Dick. And I said, fantastic, I'm, I'm on my way, basically. And that's what happened. But there was another surprise element that I really wasn't expecting. And if, I think it's just worth going down the memory lane again. We've just done that story about taking the Lancia Fulvia back to my home. Go back to the 70s, a fr good friend of my parents, an architect, had a 911 and it would have been a 2.4S or something like that. And he came round to see my parents and I was in on the conversation and he said, just amazing what Porsche have done. They've launched the Porsche Turbo road car. It's amazing. And it uses exhaust gases to pump air into the engine and make more power. And it's sort of energy for free. Amazing, amazing. Went completely over my dad's head. But I was, my interest was pricked in this Turbo 911. What's that all about? And yeah, Nick Mayman his name, and he told me, to, oh, this is a good book on 911. So it's by Paul Freer, The 911 Story. And I just devoured this book. I can remember at Agricultural College, there was all my books on animal nutrition and husbandry, etc., and a book on Porsche 911 Story as well. Now, go forward to the Goodwood meeting. I went in, and it's very odd being at Goodwood on a Thursday joint setup because the idea, Porsche actually had half of the circuit just to do some photography. And they were driving either way up around Fordwater, down around Lavant, well, no name, St. Mary's, Lavant, and then doing a UE and coming back. And that was what was going on. And the first sight of Moby Dick, I couldn't get over this car, how long, how developed it was. The Moby Dick was the last of the line of the sort of racing 935 period and it had got to its zenith. It was twin turbo, it had four valve heads on it, it had water-cooled heads as well. It was, it was lower, they'd gone to the most extreme they could do on the sort of racing regulations and lower the car and, and lengthened it and added aero to it to make it as fast as it, they could make it down the Le Mans Strait. And it was timed, I think, at 227 miles an hour. It didn't actually win Le Mans. It won other races in America, etc. a shorter distance at Le Mans that year. It actually developed a, an oil leak. They were told to slow down and then discovered when they got back to the factory, it was a minor oil leak and there was no damage to the engine. The damage was in, um, the engine was in rude health and they could have actually pressed on and potentially won, but that's all history. Now the car I wanted to explain when I got there, there was also this cover car here. And when I bought this book, this is 1976. So this is the first generation of, this is quite a famous book by Paul Freyer, obviously knows Porsche inside out. And this is 1976. And at the time, the ultimate racing turbo was this RSR Turbo 2.14. That was the car by luck, purely by luck, I got to drive. I didn't take my cameras down, but uh, Porsche had organised, it was Mark and Mitch there who were doing photography, doing video and stills. And I wasn't going to do a video on it, but then I saw the footage they'd recorded it today. It was a moody day, there was rain clouds coming over and then bright sun and it was fantastic. And the images and the video that they created that day, I just think is worth sharing. Hence the reason for this video now. And during the rain showers, when we were there, they were just doing tracking behind a, a K&GT. We all used to just jump into a car. 
and it just so happened and the door was open on the RSI so I just jumped in and well, I wanted the rain to last as long as possible because I, there I was sitting in this legendary Porsche that actually came second at Le Mans. Could have won that year in 1974, but it, in the last few hours it had lost fifth gear. The thing about this car, they developed it from basically the three litre RSR and it, it had a standard gearbox in it, not the turbo from the 930 gearbox that was enhanced to take the extra power. Basically fifth gear failed on them during the race, the last few hours of Le Mans. So they couldn't do the speed down the straights and in the end they came second, but they were beaten by a Matra Simca V12 crazy group four mad machine. And the, the, the reason it got developed was if I look at in here, it's all the histories in here. I, Paul Freire is a very technical writer that I could go into cam timing and duration and there's so much detail in this book, I'm not going to do it now. But there was rumours, they had the 917, obviously Porsche were racing with that very successfully, but they were about to change the regulations for strong improvements in 75 to 76, World Championship would contain a new formula that would mean the competing cars had to be driven homologated production cars. So the idea of this uh, RSR 2.1 turbo was just to see how they would get on with a turbocharged 911 and boy did they modify it to you know they didn't really expect it to win because they were up against the the big boys this is you know homologated road car going in with crazy cars but just to try it out before the regulations came in so that was the history behind it this RSR 2.1 turbo race car was actually developed from the 3 litre RSR and because it was turbocharged they had to use a multiple of 1.4 on the engine to, to reduce the cc to the engine of to 2.14 because you have to times it by 1.4 and you get to under the 3 litre limit so that's why it was a smaller engine they turbocharged rather than the 3 litre and the other thing they knew they weren't going to win with this car that was the expectation anyway so they needed to lighten it as much as they could and the weight they were trying to get under was 850 kilos according to the engineers at Goodwood that day I was down there 800 kilos is there or thereabouts on that 2.1 RSR when you get close to it I, the bits I was really surprised of they chopped off the rain gutters it was all completely flush here didn't have this rain gutters you see here and they moved the petrol tank the petrol tank moved from the front and it was actually here there's a great big filler on it and the tank was just inside there and it had metal around it so it was enclosed so it, you couldn't get any leaks into the passenger compartment and that was actually a good thing apparently because it made it was nearer the the center of the car and therefore was better for racing than having it up front and you didn't get the variability between a full tank and an empty tank with a petrol tank there i was surprised it actually had a, a sort of passenger seat there as well but that meant the suspension could be completely redone at the front and it had spring over dampers the torsion bars had gone they got a huge oil cooler this look here at the front which is copied on my 930s that's the difference between this and a regular turbo is that big oil cooler at the front and then at the rear they got rid of the torsion bars there as well completely different suspension much lighter and just coil overs torsion bars gone and this is all part of getting the weight down but I think the crowning glory on this RSR was the view from the back because they got away with taking all this structure here out and made a sort of space frame for the engine to hang the engine on and the suspension and that means when you look at the RSR from behind there's a turbo all on show an engine it made servicing easier it kept the heat from the turbo out into the free air it wasn't enclosed etc and what a car it was and then a magic moment came when the guys at Porsche said oh could you help us out Harry could you drive the RSR just for some tracking shots and I'm now going to bore the family forevermore because oh, I've driven an RSR but it was at slow speed but it just gave the experience of the car I got in and some of the surprises where there's a standard sort of dial on a 911 that sort of has the warning lights on it and um, oil pressure and things that and that was still in the car another surprise you start this car with a key 
the keys in the same place and off you go. And it, it had a regular race wheel for the 70s, just like the sort of thing I put on my Land or the Fulvia. It was just the same sort of wheel. But God, it was light. Just moving it about, just pushing it. You could just feel the 800 kilos. And as you got in, these monster great rims on it. I've never seen bigger arches on a car than the rear arches, rear haunches on that RS Air were just incredible. Started on a key. It, it behaved. The GT1 sort of needed a battery pack and lots of ECUs and resets. No, RS up, turn the key, off you go. And off we went and it's not a straight cut gearbox or anything it's quite noisy inside easy gear normal conventional uh, gear change and uh, i couldn't believe i'm now driving this car another surprise just sort of mouse hair mat over the dash uh, and that was how they were at the factory this car was that car from the mall and we went around i thought oh this is good and then we came to turn around and that was a bit of a surprise because it just wouldn't go around. I knew it would probably have a limited slip differential in it, but it felt even more than that. It was really didn't want to turn and it was ground and it wasn't happy. I've now discovered, having looked at this book again, it had a solid diff. It didn't have a diff. It was straight out and they just raced it with a diff with no slip. It seemed to go backwards though. So whether there was a release thing when you were going backwards, it didn't seem to grab quite so much in reverse. But wonderful experience to see that car up close and to experience it. I couldn't put it onto boost. I did. A, I went in briefly into third and one of the unfortunate things with it, the rev counter didn't work on it. And so I didn't want to push my luck, but I just felt the boost build and I went into third, but it was enough to have that sensation, that sound of that turbo spinning up and just a legendary 911. And I'm very grateful to Porsche for giving me the chance to say, I've sat behind the wheel of the 2.1 RSR 1974 Le Mans car that came second. And if you're wondering what I was doing getting a photograph of this next to Moby Dick, well, the plan is I want to take my car to Germany because there's still some questions I have on this car. I'm intrigued why it's on roof wheels. I am told it's from the factory. The spec says it, kept, it was delivered on 17 inch wheels. Was it really? So I'm going to visit roof and see if what they can tell me on it. I've had an owner of another Sonderwunsch car. He has roof wheels on his. And also, when did it gain the Porsche 934 heads and his 400 horsepower? Freisenler Motorsport did the restoration on this car for Kerry Morse in Germany. And Manfred Freisenler had it as his own car in Germany for a bit. He registered, he finished the restoration in 2019. And I'm just wondering if he was the one who put the 934 heads on rather than the regular sort of 330 horsepower you would get on a Sonder winch with the bigger turbo and the intercooler. So I'm going to visit Freisler Motorsport as well and Sonder winch and see what I can find out about this car. That's coming off in a few weeks, but this video, hope you enjoyed those clips of those incredible Porsches at Goodwood. It was a real opportunity, but I thought it was worth sharing. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.